Screwdriver, please. Volt, volt, volt. Na, na. Spanner, spanner. What are you doing? Are you making a washing machine for me? Huh? What are you talking about? This is not a washing machine. How dare you compare my magnificent gadget to a washing machine? This is not a silly household item. Go away. You are bothering me. Yeah. Shoo. Shoo. Huh? huh? Me? Are you all right? Uh, 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 yeah, yeah, I'm okay. Uh, do you smell something cooking? It smells like uh, roasted chicken. Aha! Uh -huh. Thanks, Homie. You just gave me an idea. Well, some good did come out of you getting fried. Huh? Let's say we go to a dimension that we have never seen before. Another dimension? Yes. Another dimension with new things to explore. Yes. Things that have mass and occupy space. Ah, yes, yes, yes. It's called matter. Matter? Of course it's called a matter. What else? A fridge? Let's go! Yeah! Okay, but it sounds dangerous. Uh, can I stay here instead? I'm afraid of matter. I'm afraid it will eat me alive. Homie! Okay, okay. I'm coming. Here we go! Now, can I ask you something, Professor Gloop? Sure. What is it? What is considered as matter? Well, matter is divided into non-living matter such as air, Water, rock, and soil. Or metal. Ouch! Hey! <laughs> Oops, uh, sorry. And the other is living matter such as plants, insects. Fish, birds, and humans. Oh, I get it. So things that do not have mass and do not occupy space is not matter such as meow, uh, heat, light, and sound. You are correct, Putin. Wow. Huh? It's a giant ball with a lot of smaller balls inside it. Huh? It, it will eat me. Huh? Can we go home now? Relax, homie. It's not what you think. It's not going to bite you or anything. It's only an atom. Ooh, an atom. It sounds tasty. Um, can I have some? No, you cannot eat an atom. Meow! Matter 
is built up from small individual particles called atoms. Correct, Kuchen. An atom is made up of three basic structures. The protons, neutrons, and electrons. Protons and neutrons are found in the nucleus of an atom, which is called a nucleon. Hmm, I see. Well, to understand more about atoms, I will ask Homi here to show us the details in the form of a diagram. Okay, Homi, show them. Yes, sir. Show them, um, what? Show them the thing I just said. Oh, okay. The properties of the subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons are as shown. But how can we show the value of an atom in the form of symbols, meow? Well, first, we need to know that the proton number is the number of protons in an atom. The nucleon number is the total number of nucleons in the nucleus of an atom. I see, meow. Since an atom is electrically neutral, the number of protons is the same as the number of electrons. Correct again, Kuchen. An atom can be represented as X, determined by the nuclear number and the proton number. For example, hmm. Like that one, a zinc symbol. Ah, there is another one, an aluminium symbol. Now let's try out what we have learned so far. My question is this, a neutral atom K has 18 neutrons and 17 electrons. What is the proton number and nuclear number of K? Let me try, Professor. Go ahead, Jen. Now, for a neutral atom, the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. Therefore, the answer is 17. As for the nucleon number of atom K, the nucleon number is equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. That is uh, 17 plus 18, which is equal to 35. <laughs> That's very good, Putin. <laughs> Thanks, Professor. know what that is? Mm, nope. Oh, me neither. They are the elements, pure substance that cannot be decomposed into anything simpler by any chemical reaction. Each element is represented by a symbol. 
the symbol consists of one or two letters. For example, carbon, C, oxygen, O, zinc, Z, N, gold, A, U, and sodium, N, A. Elements can be divided into metals and non-metals. Each element is identified by its proton number. Scientists have arranged all known elements according to their proton number in what is called a periodic table. Hmm. We can see that the proton number for hydrogen is 1. It's 2 for helium and 3 for lithium. And the proton number for beryllium is 4. And for boron, it's 5. <laughs> this thing is getting to be a lot of fun. Let's try searching for other elements. What is the proton number for Krypton? Yes, it's 36. Now, what's the proton number for gold? Yes, it's 79. <laughs> Interesting. Let's try a different kind of quiz. Let's complete this table with the symbol of the given elements. NE for neon. FE for iron. AG for silver. CL for chlorine. PB for lead. And CR for chromium. Excellent! The elements in the first group are very reactive metals. They are known as the alkali metals. The second group of metals is less reactive. Beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium and barium are the alkaline earth metals. The transition metals lie between group 2 and group 3. They are hard, dense and shiny. They are good conductors of heat and electricity. Some well-known transition metals are iron, copper, chromium, nickel and gold. Now, Let's move across to the other side of the periodic table and look at the non-metal elements. The group 7 elements are called the halogens. They are fluorine, bromine, iodine and astatine. As you know, gases are made up of molecules. Gases like oxygen, hydrogen, and chlorine are molecules. Hi, Professor Gloop. Oh, me? What are you doing there? Get back here immediately. Oh, me? Oh, me? However, Group O, which are known as the noble gases, are so unreactive that they are found as atoms themselves. Helium, neon, argon, krypton, Xenon and Radon are noble gases. Do you guys know what isotopes are? Iso who? Isotopes are the different nucleon numbers. Now, use the periodic table and find the proton number for each of the elements. Now, 
Nice. A column of elements in the periodic table is known as a group. There are eight groups in the periodic table. Groups 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and group O. All the elements in a group have similar properties. We will learn about their properties later. Now, a horizontal row of elements in the periodic table is called a period. There are seven main periods in the periodic table. In the periodic table, the metallic element is found on the right hand side. The non-metallic ones are on the left-hand side and the metalloids are located between the metals and non-metals. Boron, silicon, germanium, arsenic, antimony, tellurium and astatine are metalloids. Metalloids are semi-metals. They are on the borderline between metals and non-metals. So, isotopes have the same number of protons but a different number of neutrons. Yes, and the isotopes of some elements have similar chemical properties but different physical properties. Let's look at some examples of isotopes. You can see that isotopes are the same except for their number of neutrons. Can you find the number of protons, neutrons and electrons in these two isotopes of carbon? Nice! Good job, my friends! Protons and neutrons in the new
Well, like they say, all good things must come to an end. But before we leave this place, let's look at what we have learned today. Today, we have learned that matter is divided into living matters and non-living matters. We also learned the structure of an atom. And how it works. The elements which are divided into metals and non-metals and classification found in the periodic table. Oh yes, we also talked about isotopes. Phew! Okay Kuchin, let's go home. I'm tired. That's all for now. Let's go home. Where's Mommy? Huh? Oh, uh, mm, uh, meow, meow, oh. Oh, Professor, don't leave me here. Oh, I want to go home. Oh, Professor, Professor.